Hey, this is Peter with PCT Services, and I've got a great tutorial video for you today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tune your PC and utilize a program called AutoRuns to figure out what on earth is going on and booting up when you start your computer. Now, AutoRuns is a program that is really great. It's actually made by Microsoft. Uh, it's totally free, and this is a program that almost all the technicians that work on computers are at least aware of because of how great this program is. Basically, there's pretty much no program that's better than Auto Runs for what it does. Uh, it's simple, it's really effective, it's straight to the point, it's free, it's a very powerful program. Uh, so, to get Auto Runs, you're going to go to uh, www.sysinternals.com. That's where uh, that's where they host it. Like I said, it's a Microsoft uh, product, but it's done by the Sys Internals team. You can also just Google Auto Runs, and there will be thousands of links where you can find it. Just make sure you download it from a reputable source. So, if you're in a situation where you try to run Auto Runs and maybe you have a virus or something, it doesn't run. All you need to do is right-click and do rename, change it to anything, and it's gonna most likely run. The virus is probably only blocking the program named Auto Runs, not the program itself. So once you've got Auto Runs, we're going to start it up. You need to give it a second when you're actually, uh, when you load it for the first time. And you need to make sure that it says ready when you scan it. Now, one thing that I forgot to show you, for me, I'm always using administrator rights. A lot of people uh, don't use administrator rights all the time, and very rightly so. So you want to actually open the program by right-clicking on it and doing run as administrator. Otherwise, if I wasn't doing that, if you didn't run as administrator, the second you try to click something, it's going to pop up and say, program needs to have administrator rights to do this. If you want to restart, hit yes, it restarts the program, you start from scratch. So you need to run it as administrator first. It's got a lot of tabs, and as you can see, all of these tabs are very populated with a lot of stuff. So right off the bat, this is a really complicated program, but it's easy to use, it's easy to learn if you're brave and you know you, you put a little bit of time and effort into it. You don't want to just click all over this program because you can destroy your Windows installation by doing so. Uh, so the first thing you want to make sure is set, and it most likely is in newer versions. You want to go to Options, Filter Options, make sure Hide Windows Entries is set. That is really important because it's going to stop you from kind of destroying Windows and shutting off something like WinLogon that's going to make it so your PC no longer boots or something like that. So set that. If you want to hide all Microsoft entries like uh, Microsoft Office products too, you can do that as well. That's up to you but make sure Hide Windows Entries is set unless you really know what you're doing. So what you want to do is go tab by tab looking at the stuff that's in each one. The Log On tab is relatively safe. You can kind of disable almost anything here and it's just going to not start up automatically when you load your PC. Like if I don't want to run the Catalyst Control Center and I don't want this icon down below and can't figure out how to do it, this will do it. Just uncheck uh, the box Restart the computer and Catalyst Control Center will no longer start up. Same goes with Daemon Tools. Um, I, as you can see, I've unchecked almost everything here, but nothing here is really uh, necessary to run on the PC. If I don't want to run Dropbox, I don't have to run Dropbox. All that means is that Dropbox is not going to start up when I start my PC. I can still run Dropbox by double checking or double clicking on the icon uh, on my desktop but it's not going to show up automatically in my start menu here, or my, excuse me, my taskbar. So the other stuff, um, the Explorer tab, that's going to be, uh, like when you right-click on stuff, that's when you right-click on different programs. All of these things are really going to be enabled or disabled by the Explorer menu. Uh, if you don't have any uh, use for that stuff, you know, you can kind of figure out where they are and change them there. This also does a lot of other stuff, but that's just an example of what that can do. Uh, Internet Explorer tab, you shouldn't be using it anyway, but you can uncheck all the stupid plugins, schedule tasks, services. If, uh, if you have a virus on the PC, services and drivers is really going to be where a lot of the, the, the viruses are coming in 
or where they're running from. The other place where you're going to find viruses is the, is the login folder. But services and drivers more so is the sort of stuff that uh, that is really embedded in the system a little bit deeper. So that's a great place to actually start looking for stuff. Uh, really any of these three tabs. And what's really nice about this program is that it shows you the publisher who made the, the file in question. And that's a really great way to kind of figure out whether or not you've got a program that shouldn't be there that's running on the PC. And in addition, you can see the file locations of them. So let's find a file that is suspect. Okay, so this program was some like PC tuning program or something stupid, nothing serious, not a virus or anything, but uh, when you look at it, it's actually going to be in the users, so admin, that's my username in Windows, uh, app data, local, temp. That is a extremely suspect file location because really program drivers do not run from your temp folder. Uh, programs don't run from your temp folder. Programs in general will run from like the program files folder, stuff like that. If it's a driver, it's probably going to be at sys32 drivers. Any file that's out of anything, users, app data, local, temp, whatever, if it's in there, be wary of it. You need to look it up and figure out exactly what it is and why it's in there, where it came from, when you downloaded it, if there's other stuff that came in at the same time. That is a huge warning sign. Now we can jump to the folder, we can search online. This is really the best thing to do. So we can right click on it, we can search online, and that's going to bring up uh, your web browser and actually basically just Google it for you. Uh, now that's really helpful because in, in almost all cases, somebody else in the internet has dealt with whatever program or file that you're dealing with now, they've dealt with it before, long before you. So you can kind of use the wisdom of the internet to figure out what the file is. Uh, just make sure that you read. Sometimes you want to check a couple different sources for the file because on occasion the internet's wrong. And like I said, you want to check all of these different things. Uh, depending on the, the, the file that's on the system, depending on whether you have a virus or you're just trying to tune it up, there can be stuff hidden in all of these tabs. And you really need to go through one by one and figure out what the stuff is. Give it a shot. Like I said, it's auto runs, great program, totally free. The link to download it is going to be at the bottom of my post. And once again, my name is Peter at PCT Services. I thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like and comment at the bottom. Thank you.